Hello, we're here again for the April edition of Green Finger Tips, and we're here with Mark Smith. Hi, Mark, Graham. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Right, and what have we got today? Well, uh, for April's uh, plant of the month, we've got uh, Camellia. Um, okay. It's a it's, most people think that's an unusual choice because most people think of camellias as being really difficult to grow. Mm -hmm. But camellias are extremely easy to grow. Um, that's, we've got a few varieties here that are just starting to... Uh, well, some are in full flower here. This uh, is uh, camellia silver anniversary there. Massive, massive uh, flowers lots and lots of flowers great because it's a silver anniversary that could be uh, a really good gift for somebody uh, but as you can see from the selection that we've got here we've got pinks uh, that's a variety called Debbie very very popular variety always uh, succeeds very free flower and very easy to grow okay um, we've got Adolf Udderson there a beautiful red semi double that uh, particular variety lots and lots of different colors you can also get them in uh, yellows whites pinks reds um, just a very very um, beautiful healthy looking shrub so what's this we've got here Matt this uh, chip bark is it uh, yeah this, soily stuff yeah it's a it's a chip bark um, it's um, it's a top dressing basically for pots. It, it makes the top, top of the pots uh, look attractive, uh, keeps the weeds down, also stops moss and algae forming on the tops of the pots. But it also acts as a um, as a duvet. It, so it keeps the frost out. You know, we're having very very frosty mornings at the moment, and yes. uh, it just keeps the frost out, uh, stops the uh, roots from getting damaged. Um, we. We set, mentioned that uh, it makes uh, a good present, uh, camellias do. The great in containers, mm -hmm. uh, the great against a wall. In actual fact, if you place a uh, camellia up against a wall, it actually sends all the flowers outwards, so actually giving you a much better show. You can use it as a freestanding shrub, but you get flowers all the way around the plant rather than just at the front. So if you was to plant, plant that against a wall, it would send all the flowers outwards, and it looks like the whole plant is just covered, covered in bloom absolutely gorgeous most of these uh, varieties will get to about six to seven feet so it's something that most people could cope with in their own garden okay and um, very very easy um, don't really take any looking after in uh, after care at all apart from just keeping well watered they don't like to be dried out at all mm -hmm. uh, most people worry about the frost um, you would need to plant this in a a west or south facing position because that doesn't get the early morning sun which again gets the frost um, but it's just such an easy uh, plant and I, and I really recommend uh, one of these for anybody's garden. So is that what makes it stand out from most of the others? Yeah, is that it's what a, makes it plant of the month? It's a mu yeah, it, yeah. It's, it stands it out from a plant of the month because it's ease and you can have it in a container. There's no maintenance at all, there's no pruning as such. Um, that's what makes it stand out and that's why it's my plant of the month. Okay, so what makes it easy to grow? You, do, it, do people think it's difficult? Yeah, people think they're not hardy, um, but in actual fact, I mean, they're inside our glass house at the moment, but the only reason for that is the wind. The wind blow, blows them over and makes them tatty and damages the plants. But uh, people think that they, you have to protect them, cover them in plastic, cover them in fleece. It's not true at all. I've got one at home that's on a south-facing position, and I don't cover that at all. I don't have problems with the fl uh, flower buds getting frosted at all. Um, so long as long as you put them in ericaceous compost, they are acid loving. Um, so whether you put them in the ground or put them in a container, they do need ericaceous compost. Um, and like I say, absolutely no pruning whatsoever. Most other shrubs you would need to do some kind of pruning, with camellias you don't. OK, and how much to, do they need watering or...? Um, as and when. Um, if the weather starts to improve, I mean, it's a very, very sunny day today, uh, you would need to water these at least once a day okay. uh, during the growing season. If there's any chance of frost, I wouldn't water at all. Uh, just uh, as the the season progresses and they're growing and they're, and they're starting to send uh, buds and form buds, you need to keep the water levels up just to make the buds nice and plump so you get a really, really good show. Okay, we've now moved over to the bedding plant area, and Mark, uh, what have you got in your hand here? Uh, well, this is the time of year to uh, start your uh, hanging baskets if you're lucky enough to have a heated greenhouse. Uh, and this is 
apart from obviously the the usual thing of seed sowing a lot of people don't like seed sowing because they think it's a bit fiddly and you get too many plants what we've got here are mini uh, plug plants this is the first stage uh, this is actually a commercial uh, tray that we've cut up ourselves uh, you know and you have uh, either 12 plants or 20 plants or eight, on some of them uh, four plants um, but this is a, an easy thing to start off with the the, uh, the tiny plugs just pull out of the uh, the little uh, cell there and you can pot those up into a heated greenhouse and grow them on into a slightly bigger pot okay. if need be and then plant them on into a hanging basket uh, once they've rooted through or if you on certain varieties like uh, the trailing petunia you could plant those straight into a basket again if you've got a heated greenhouse um, somewhere where they've got a bit of frost protection because uh, at the moment we are getting uh, the odd sharp frost during the night so uh, and that would kill uh, the summer bedding plants um, the, the great thing about these, they're very, very cheap. They work out about 15p a, a plant, as opposed to if you wait a little bit later on in, in say, May time, when the, they'll be about £1.99, £1.79, something like that per plant. So you're saving quite a bit of money if you can get in there early. Uh, and also, by doing the baskets uh, this early, you're also getting a, a lot more show from your basket. Um, yes. You know, the flowers are starting to appear a lot earlier if you're doing the baskets early, uh, so you get a better show throughout the uh, throughout the summer. It's getting when you can, really, for them. Getting when you can. Yep. The, the problem is with uh, plug plants is uh, there's a very, very uh, short shelf life. Um, the, the, you've only got a couple of weeks before you, while you can buy plug plants, and then the bigger plants come on later on uh, in the uh, season. So you've really got to get in there sharpest it's all it's all about being prepared okay. and getting yourself ready so they're the mini uh, plug plants we the next stage on i've just got tucked on Sorry, but you just said there about uh, the sewing bit at the start. Yeah. Is this simplifying it down? It is, yeah. It's taking... Uh, well, I, I mentioned about the waste. I mean, it's great if you're doing a lot of bedding plants um, it, by seed sowing. You, you sow a packet of seeds and you could get two to three hundred plants, depending on the variety of uh, bedding. Sometimes that's a lot a lot of plants for any one person unless you're doing a big floral display um, so this way there's no wastage uh, you're getting exactly the right amount of plants that you want and you're not wasting your money because that's, that's key at the end of the day exactly um, but the next stage on if that's okay. a little bit too st small for you we've got these jumbo um, uh, plug plants these right. are kinder plants you can get these every, everywhere but we've got a particularly good selection here uh, there's a vast vast uh, array of, of colours and different plants and it's all the popular uh, varieties that we have this one that I've got here is a trailing petunia now trailing petunia is very very quick growing uh, it's one of the most popular basket plants you can get uh, this particular one there this uh, fanfare flame gorgeous uh, variety and it's actually uh, little known that they're scented as well oh. when they're growing and the flowers come out you can actually get a scent from them but these are I'll just put these down for a second these are nice these kinder plants um, what I particular like these is the eco credentials that they've got. Um, they used to have pots, yes. but nowadays uh, you've got the uh, the label there to show you what you're buying and uh, it, it encompasses the plant. But these actually have no pot on wow. whatsoever, That's... so you're just getting a rooted plant there. Um, just, just to have hold of that. Yeah, one? of course. Yeah, you can. wow. And, uh, uh... and the, the label can actually uh, be recycled, so there's there's no waste, there's no extra packaging that you need to dispose of or anything like and that. And how big do these grow? Well, if you put three of those into a 14-inch uh, hanging basket, you would get those to trail down at least six foot uh, by the uh, the end of the season. Of course, that that whole six foot will be packed with flour. Six foot. Six foot from but that from wow. that one plant. That's it's incredible. Isn't it is it? incredible when you think about it. Yeah, I mean, when you look at a tiny, tiny seed, when you see how small that is, and you can get a huge plant from a t tiny seed. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's incredible nature, isn't it? Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. It, it's um, but it, it's all about cost. I mean, the the jumbo uh, plug plants. Is it again? Get them early. Get them early. Get them early. The jumbo, the jumbos will stay around for a little while. Uh, they actually uh, cross over into the the bigger plants. So if you wanted to keep the cost down of 
of doing your summer bedding, you can still buy Kinders a little bit later on. Uh, these are 99p, so a, a little bit more than the than the mini plugs, but they're still cheaper than the full you fully just, grown plants. Sorry, do you just want to show the vast range we can? Yeah, and we, I mean, what we've got here, uh, we've got the Nemesias, uh, which is a training plant. We've got the Peter, which is a training plant. The vast range of um, training petunias, some fantastic varieties at the moment. Uh, we've got, uh, which has only just come out in the last uh, couple of, well, in the last year, uh, black petunia. Uh, black flowers are particularly unusual because uh, normally it's yellows and reds and oranges and things like that. But uh, black is becoming very, very fashionable. Um, we've got uh, Libia. Now, Lobelia is the very, very uh, free-flowing, cascading uh, basket plant that you see that uh, gets put in the sides of the baskets and trails down. Masses and masses of flower. And then the traditional uh, geraniums. We've got some foliage geraniums here. Uh, instead of you getting flower, you're actually getting foliage colour as well. So while you're waiting for the flower uh, to appear, you've got gorgeous foliage colour. That'll intensify. You'll get a lot more bright yellow and a, mo a lot more vivid orangey red in the uh, in the vein in there so you, you don't have to wait for a flower you've got beautiful foliage to start off with and that's that, and that's an important thing to think about uh, likewise there's there's helichrysum here which is a silver uh, foliage plant it's it's a lot nicer to include a few foliage plants into the hanging basket than just straight ordinary boring um, plain green foliage yes so I would always recommend putting a few foliage plants into the hanging basket just to give you that little bit of added interest really and how many uh, times do they need watering um, you know do they do certain plants need watering more than the others? Yeah, absolutely. You'll find while we're, uh, while we're watering the, the stand here, certain things like the, I've mentioned the petunias are very, very quick growing. They take up a lot of water and you'll find that the petunias are actually dry where the thing next to it, like the nemesia, will be um, still wet. So there's a careful balance of, uh, of uh, your watering. You don't want to overwater because it'll mm. start to rot, but then you don't want to underwater. Um, so you do have to check it and it's particularly for the, the plants that you're using, like say uh, petunias can be very very thirsty, uh, geraniums are very very easy, they, they're drought tolerant in fact so they take less water, I see, right. um, so if you want to use less water I'd stick with uh, things like geraniums and a lot of the Mediterranean type uh, bedding plants that we do, any of the daisy type flowers um, that we've got, the, um, this is osteospernum um, uh, which is uh, voltage yellow, which is a new variety, and it's unusual because it's yellow because normally they're pinks. That's a very good drought tolerant uh, plant to have. Uh, so if you if you're not too clever on your watering in your hanging basket, mm -hmm. it's better to include a few uh, drought tolerant plants so you, your whole basket doesn't fail. You've got one or two that will survive if you have a few uh, mishaps. Um, but yeah, it's um, a, a very, very cheap way of, uh, of doing your hanging baskets and uh, you can save up to 10 to 15 pounds per basket by using uh, plug plants. Um, so uh, I would uh, certainly recommend using plug plants if you, if you can. Right, Matt, that was very informative about bedding plants. Uh, where are we going next? Uh, I want to show you the bedding plant production that we do. Uh, as a retail nursery, we grow all of our own bedding plants and I just okay. want to show you the process. Uh, okay. Okay, we've come over to the bedding plant production. Um, you have a bit of a history on uh, how you started growing the uh, plants. Well, uh, we, we were growing vegetable plants and salad crops for a, a leading supermarket many, many years ago. And that supermarket asked uh, if we would be interested in uh, growing them uh, bedding plants. Uh, which we did. Uh, we did successfully for many, many years. And then unfortunately one particular year there wasn't the weather wasn't great and they, they left us with all the stock. So oh, that's nice of them, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it was about 100,000 bedding plants, so we, uh, it was a lot of uh, stock to uh, get rid of. And at that point, we weren't a retail nursery or garden centre at that point. So John Jackson, the, the owner, he kind of turned that negative around and uh, you know, offered the bedding plants to the general public, uh, which was a new thing for us. We'd never retailed before. And it was a success. And uh, there was a limited range at that point. Uh, because it was new to us uh, but now uh, because we are a, a, a retail nursery and we actually grow all of our bedding plants uh, that we sell we can actually 
pick and choose and pick the best, best varieties uh, that we can. I mean, standing here, we're in front of uh, the uh, bedding uh, fuchsias. This is a, a, variety, uh, a range called Buds of May, which is a particularly good range. And we, we have about 15 different varieties in this uh, Buds of May range. Um, so it just gives the customer a lot of choice, a lot of selection. Yes, people absolutely. Want, people want to um, have uh, colour coordinated baskets these days. Uh, in the olden days, they wanted just masses and masses of colour, uh, but now they, they want to go for the purples and reds, or, or just solely reds or blues. Well, we give the, the customer lots of choice to be able to do that, and, uh, and fuchsia is a particularly uh, good one. What we've uh, had, uh, what we've got here like I said, is the fuchsia ones, and this is uh, the plug plants potted straight into the uh, into the round pots, and these are actually in situ now, ready for sale. So these, in two, three weeks, these will be ready for sale. Uh, they'll be fully grown plants with uh, flower buds starting to show, uh, and these are all in situ, ready to go. Um, a lot of the automated uh, bedding plant production are potted into packs, and they go off to a heated greenhouse uh, for two to three weeks, and then brought out on for sale okay uh, so you sell them here and uh, here and now so yeah to speak. The, this is this is all done ready we don't have to uh, move them again because that's one of the annoying jobs that you you put them in a greenhouse and then you have to bring them back out for sale uh, because we've got plenty of space and because we're in a under a growing greenhouse we can put them straight out for sale and uh, you're not having to do the job twice which is uh, very very time-consuming and with um, retail uh, uh, garden centres, they normally uh, just get them from factories and sell them, but you actually grow your own. We actually is... grow their own. Um, we, we've always done it. Um, we, can, we can really control the quality. Um, if you was to, like many, many garden centres around the area, buy all their bedding plants in, they really haven't got any control over the, the plants that they get in. Um, uh, or even the varieties. We can control the quality, it doesn't go out for sale unless it's of A1 quality because we've got a, a really good reputation for growing our own bedding. Uh, so we don't let anything go out that's, uh, that's, that's poor or Ill, Ill looking. Uh, but because we're, we're using the same supplier uh, for plants year after year, as you can see, all the plants are all nice and even. Uh, there's no, well, they wouldn't get p uh, potted if they were duff, but they, they're all nice and even, and, uh, and that's the kind of quality that we want. So uh, we're able to choose our supplies, you see. We, we, okay, yeah. We've got that choice, whereas, like I say, a lot of garden centres, they haven't got that choice. Okay. And do you sell them in just the pots or do you sell the tray? You yeah, could sell the tray. We do. Good. In actual fact, we do. Uh, that's a really good point. We, we sell the individual uh, pots because somebody wants uh, Turkish delight there and, uh, and that goes uh, pot in their colour scheme in the hanging basket. But we do do a mix and match, uh, so long as it's the same size pot because it makes it easier then. If it's the same size pot and it's uh, the same amount in the tray, we'll actually sell the whole tray. Um, um, uh, obviously, a discounted price, you know, uh, which is a multi-buy uh, option. Uh, you don't have to have all the same variety, but you can have a mix and match. So you can almost do your whole hang basket from one tray. Uh, so, uh, and customers seem to like that. Okay. And what sort of soil are we using? Uh, this is a, a multi-purpose uh, soil. Um, most people can buy multi-purpose. The difference with us, as a grower, we have to use more reduced peat now. Okay. Um, so a lot of the the compost is, as you can see, has got little flex of uh, wood chip and it's um, it's a lot of the government's trying to encourage us to use less peat in, in the production it causes a few problems with our automated um, transplanting machine it doesn't like the the wood chip in there uh, doesn't affect uh, a sterer uh, putting these in pots uh, but uh, the wood chip uh, holds the moisture, it's, um, it gives it a, the compost a little bit more body because if that was ordinary multi-purpose, very, very light and once it dries out, it's very difficult to get wet again. So the, the actual wood chip actually holds the moisture a little bit better. And they need direct sunlight all the time? Yeah, uh, I mean, these are, these are on a south-facing position. These have got plenty of sunlight. These will um, develop. If they was in a shady position, they'd stay stunted for quite a few uh, weeks. So, yeah, nice sunny position, plenty of air as well. Air is really important. Important. If you don't get enough air circulation, you get things like problems with mildew. Uh, that's why you can't really put bedding plants, if you were to grow your own, you can't really put bedding plants on a windowsill or, or in the house next to a radiator because there's lots of moisture mm -hmm. there and mm -hmm. that would cause uh, problems, uh, fungal problems with the plants. 
Okay, we've come outside to the alpine plants now. Mark, explain these. Yeah, uh, the, well, one of the first uh, jobs of, uh, of this month is, is rejuvenating your alpine gardens. Uh, I've done this myself at home just, re just recently. Uh, because of the bad winter that we've had, very, very wet, very, very cold, uh, a lot of the alpine plants are looking really, really tired at the moment. So it's a good time. It's nice and bright now. It's starting to get a little bit warmer. Still uh, cold, chill in the air, though. Yeah, still, but alpines are very, very hardy. That's the great thing. And uh, it, with a little bit of uh, attention and care, you can get them looking really, really nice again. So, I mean, the, one of the main things is, while it's been so wet, is rejuvenating any tatty-looking uh, gravel. Um, gravel can get very, very green and mossy and that kind of thing. So brush off all the old um, gravel or anything that looks very, very dirty, because that can harbour weeds as well, and rejuvenate it with fresh gravel. And then almost immediately that will change the appearance of the, your entire alpine garden and also if you've lost any plants during the the winter time it's uh, nice to uh, to start off with uh, some fresh plants i mean we've got some uh, traditional fra favourites here. This is uh, Aubrecia. Now you might uh, see this in people's garden, it sort of trails over rocks and in a couple of uh, weeks time, I mean there's plenty of flower bud at the moment, It's uh, these are going to be packed with flowers, just starting now. Early colour, you know, it's mm. really, really... Looking uh, very healthy. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a very, very dense, compact plant. You put this at the edges of uh, alpine gardens and it trails over, it's like a sea of blue, it's absolutely beautiful. Usually when people come in and say, I've just been past somebody's garden, Garden and uh, I can see this blue creeping over the rockery. It's usually all brecia. Oh, the one that I've got next to it here is saxifrage, and again, this is a uh, very, very dense. It's almost like a cushion. Um, lots and lots of flower buds coming out, and that will break it open into full red flowers. This particular one, but you can get these in white, pink. Uh, this one's obviously red, but this stays very, very dense. And because it stays very, very dense, there's no maintenance with this at all. You simply plant it, leave it, forget about. It. And the great thing about alpine plants as well, they don't need any fertilizer. They actually do better with less feed. So uh, somebody that's not really into gardening could uh, make a really nice show with alpine plants. And you've got stone or gravel at the bottom. What's that? Um that helps with the drainage because alpine plants uh, they traditionally like a very very sandy gritty uh, soil rather than a heavy clay soil uh, they do particularly well in very very poor soil um, but the gravel there uh, when i mentioned about um, re replacing gravel this is all fresh gravel makes the top of the pot look particularly nice but if you had this in the an alpine garden it actually contrasts really well with the green foliage you know uh, the green foliage is really really attractive uh, against the stone there and you can get so many different stone colors now uh, golds uh, blues greens and this is like the the beigey color um, so it actually makes the uh, the foliage stand out really really well and uh, yeah it just finishes the uh, alpine garden off it does look very detailed and very colorful yeah it's uh, it's a very uh, very attractive plant, and in actual fact, if you don't use this in a in an alpine garden, these make very very good container plants. Uh, you could uh, have a sort of 12 inch planter and dot a few uh, alpine plants in that container with a few rocks to give it a bit of uh, interest, and uh, dot a few alpine plants in there, cover it with the uh, the gravel, and that makes a little miniature alpine garden. You can actually give that as a as a present. Okay, we moved over to the Hebe section now. Um, just explain what Hebe is. Uh, Hebe is a, a really popular uh, shrub, um, evergreen shrub. Uh, the ones that we've got here, these are the exclusive range, which basically means that they are a foliage Hebe. Most um, regular Hebes tend to have a, a plain green leaf, uh, which is very, very nice, and the flower very, uh, very well. But these new varieties, this uh, particular one here is called Heartbreaker, which has all the new growth comes out a really vivid, bright pink and um and that's all the new growth so instead of waiting for a flower to come out you actually have the the color of the foliage and that's because it's evergreen you have that uh, beautiful uh, color throughout the year uh, but as you can see across the uh, the table here um, these uh, they come in various different colors whether it's the pinks the yellows the greens uh, and the purples these are uh, again with nice red tips uh, these give you foliage color throughout the year so they're actually giving you really good value for money and then the little 
just a bit later on, around about um, May, June time, these will start to come into flower. So they do have a flower as well. Hebe is a great, great container plant, very little maintenance. In fact, these require no pruning whatsoever. Um, a lot of the older style Hebe's, they like to be pruned straight after the flower, but these uh, like to be just left uh, well alone. Um, Right, I just want to show us what's in the what's in the bottom of these and what sort of soil yeah, we're using. What we tend to use, I mean, this is a this is a multi-purpose compost and they need nothing fancy at all. Um, but one of the other jobs of the month, uh, this month, is actually what we uh, we showed earlier on on the um, the olive was the little balls of fertilizer. Now we go round. Uh, I mean, so this is exactly the same at home, but we go around and sprinkle a few granular fertilizer um, beads around the base of the plant and. And the rain will actually break that fertilizer down and feed the plant throughout the year and the reason you do it at this time of year is they're just starting to grow now if you was to do this around about uh, November time uh, you would put the feed on the, all that rain that we've had over winter and the and the cold would break the beads down and it would just leach away all the fertilizer okay. you're gonna get less chance of rain now uh, so you put the fertilizer on now the plants going to get the fertilizer as it's growing when it really really needs it and um, and that's why we tend to put fertilizer on this has a general purpose fertilizer because again hebes uh, uh, don't really need anything special at all um, good multi-purpose granular fertilizer is super for these if you was to put uh, fertilizer on things like uh, camellias azaleas uh, rhododendrons and japanese azalea uh, japanese uh, maples they would need an ericaceous fertilizer say that they would need a different kind of fertilizer but regular shrubs just need a general purpose fertilizer again people think um, hebe is a very very tender plant and you need to protect them and cover them in plastic it's not true at all so long as you don't do anything crazy like water them when it's about to freeze perfectly happy yeah anybody could uh, could plant a hebe in and i think hebe is one of those plants that if you're really starting out in gardening you just start off with a hebe because it will never fail on you uh, unless you have a very very bad winter um, but it will never usually fail on you you get good color good flower and uh, it will give you the buzz for gardening then if you if you plant a hebe first of all in your garden a hebe heartbreaker hebe heartbreaker thanks mark for the very informative look around today um, if people want to get in touch with you how can they do so uh, well they can get uh, in touch with us the usual way via our telephone number which is derby 01332 700 800 uh, or the they could get us on our website uh, with an email as well uh, which is www.gardencentredarby.co.uk or if they're on Facebook they can add us as a friend uh, in the search bar they can search for Swarkston Nursery remembering the E in Swarkston uh, which will lead us to our Facebook page and also our restaurant. Okay so we'll be back next month for some more informative tips. Thank you.